The Mercedes Sprinter is a large van with a big heart. That heart being a class-leadingly efficient range of much improved Euro 5 compatible diesel engines that take the fight to Vauxhall Movano and Volkswagen Crafter sized rivals. These more refined units offer potentially large efficiency savings to businesses who will appreciate this model's spacious, practical, high quality virtues. When it comes to large vans, one stands above all others right across Europe. This one, the Mercedes Sprinter. Nearly two million of them have been produced, over half a million of those being of the second generation version that we're looking at here. This is the best-selling large LCV across the continent, a superiority underlined since this second generation version was introduced back in 2006. This vehicle shares its design with Volkswagen's Crafter, but not its engines. And it's under the bonnet that changes in recent years have moved this vehicle further ahead of its competitors. A new generation of Euro 5 compatible CDI diesel engines have set running costs and efficiency standards that more recent rivals have struggled to match. Now, uh, amongst these competitors are the Renault Master Vauxhall Movano uh, design, the uh, Citroen Relay, Peugeot Boxer and Fiat Ducato collaboration, and of course, that Volkswagen alternative. But all are still playing catch up behind this Sprinter. Mercedes was, after all, the first LCV maker to introduce V6 power to this segment the first to introduce stop-start technology to cut running costs, and uh, they're a leader in promoting natural gas power as an alternative. So the Sprinter stacks up on paper, but let's see if it stacks up as well on the road. Now, the conditions under which business people have to operate their vans aren't getting any easier. So you want a vehicle like this one to be able to ease the strains of everyday motoring. And first impressions when you climb up into the cab are good. The steering wheel is set at a more bus-like angle than the brand's smaller Vito model, but uh, visibility is great from the commanding driving position and there's a quality feel to everything around you, underlined by the reputation of the three-pointed star that shines out from the middle of the steering wheel. The driver's seat feels a bit firmer than the norm, but there's great under-thigh support and support in the small of your back, which should aid aches and pains at the end of a long drive. Just how long a drive you'd want to undertake in this vehicle will, of course, depend upon the engine that you choose for your Sprinter. Now, the power plant that forms the backbone of the range is a redesigned Euro 5 version of Mercedes stalwart 2.15 litre four-cylinder common rail diesel, a unit that has already gained a good reputation for its combination of performance and economy, and an engine that almost uniquely for a four-cylinder LCV diesel is fitted with balancer shafts to eliminate vibration and improve what were already class-leading levels of refinement. Now, as with previous Sprinter models, this unit comes in three states of tune. The options beginning with the 95 brake horsepower entry-level version. Now, this uh, particular unit has only a single stage turbocharger. So although it has a useful 250 Newton meters of torque, it can't match the smoothness and response offered by the twin turbo that's standard on the 129 and 163 bhp versions of this same engine. Now these offer either 305 or 360 Newton meters of torque, enough to deal with increased towing weights that in the case of the 3.5 ton Sprinter version that most businesses use, that's the one I'm driving here, well that towing weight has increased to the same figure, 3.5 tons. Above the 163 brake horsepower variant, uh, rather unusually in the van sector, there's a V6 option a V6 CDI that uh, generates 190 brake horsepower and a, a slug of torque so enormous, 440 Newton meters, that Mercedes has had to redesign the standard six-speed manual gearbox to cope. In fact, Mercedes has redesigned all Sprinter gearboxes in recent times, adding eco gear labeling, referring to the way that the ratios are now more widely spaced for efficient running, topped and tailed by very low geared first for snappier hill starts fully loaded and a high striding top 
for a more efficient, more relaxed running on the motorway. And uh, talking of gears, if you opt for the five speed automatic gearbox option, it comes with start off assist, essentially uh, a uh, hill holder clutch to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Now handling of course, as ever, depends on the extent of the load that you're carrying, but traction is always sure in this vehicle and can be boosted still further if your business uh, habitually uses off tarmac tracks by opting for the 4x4 option that you can get if you go for a 211, 311, 315 or 318 CDI model. Now the look of this improved Sprinter has changed little since it was first launched in second generation form back in 2006. But then large vans in this segment don't tend to be bought for aesthetic reasons. The imposing twin slat front grille with its large three pointed star at the center is sufficient to make the point that yours is a business not prepared to compromise on quality. And to emphasize the practical side, there are large redesigned heated wide angle door mirrors and a useful step built into the front bumper from which it's easy to climb up and clean the tinted windscreen. Inside, the links to Mercedes-Benz passenger cars are instantly apparent. The clear, classily penned instruments, the ventilation controls and the stereo installation, well, they're all lifted direct from Mercedes A-Class and B-Class models. Um, that means that you get a whole interior feel that's probably way above what you'd expect a panel van of this kind to deliver. Elsewhere, great care seems to have been taken to keep things tough and hard wearing while maintaining that plush ambience. At the wheel, well, the revised seats are supportive and while it's disappointing to find that uh, the steering wheel isn't adjustable um, and particularly height adjustable, it isn't much more to specify a comfort driver's seat that is and uh, it, on the comfort seat, you can also adjust the angle of the seat cushion too. The three-seater cab is standard and features a middle seat backrest that can fold down and turn into a handy table, which can be used for completing paperwork. It uh, also includes a couple of cup holders and even space to clip in your pen. Now, in terms of oddment storage space around the cabin, well, you've got these lipped shelves above both driver and passenger. There's a shelf behind the instrument binnacle. There are large door bins in both doors that are a bit narrow, do have a molding that will accommodate a bottle of water or a flask. You've got uh, a lockable glove box. And there's also uh, an A4 sized shelf in the middle top of the dash here that can accommodate a clipboard. In terms of drinks holders, well, you've got uh, a drinks holder built into the passenger side dash top shelf over here. If uh, that's not convenient, then there's a pull-out ashtray that also has a can holder here. And there's another drinks holder just behind the instrument binnacle. There's also a clip here to hold loose paperwork. And there are coat hooks behind both driver and passenger seats. Now, list prices vary in the 20 to 35,000 pound bracket, depending on the variant you choose and the options you select. That means a premium of just over 3,000 pounds over, over a smaller Mercedes Vito medium sized van fitted with the same engine. It also means a slight premium over the kind of figures you'd be asked for from rivals like equivalent versions of the Ford Transit, the uh, Vauxhall Movano and Renault Master Design, and the Citroen Relay, Fiat Ducato and Peugeot Boxer collaboration. But it's the same kind of money that you'd be asked for for this model's design stablemate, Volkswagen's Crafter, though direct comparisons between the two are difficult because they use different engines with slightly different power outputs. One thing though is common to all of these rivals. None can better this Sprinter when it comes to the all important issues of residual values and whole life costs. As for this Sprinter model range, well first you've to choose your body style. As well as the panel van we're looking at here, there's a travel liner minibus that can seat up to 17 people, as well as the usual chassis cab and drop side options. Now, 
Uh, for the purposes of this film, I'm going to assume that you want a panel van. The choice of standard, high or super high roof heights you might expect, but slightly more unusual in this class is the provision of up to four vehicle body lengths, short, medium, long or extra long. Then, depending on the kind of use you have in mind, you have to choose your gross vehicle weight, either 3, 3.5, 4.6 or 5 tonnes. Now, the, uh, the three ton models have badge work starting with the letter 2, so 210 CDI, 213 CDI, 216 CDI or 219 CDI, depending on the diesel engine you want to choose. The 3.5 ton models use the same model structure, but badge work starting with the number 3. The 4.6 uh, uh, ton models have badge work starting with the number 4, and the 5 ton models have badge work starting with the number 5. Hopefully that's not too complicated to grasp. Choose carefully and you'll not be short of either space or heft for the seriously hefty cargoes that this vehicle can now swallow. Anything from 7.5 to a truly enormous 17 cubic metres. Those wanting to exercise the upper range of this vehicle's capabilities will therefore want to avoid the 95 brake horsepower and 250 newton metres of torque provided by the entry-level four-cylinder diesel in favour of the extra pulling power offered by this unit in its 129 and 163 brake horsepower twin turbo guises. If you've really heavy loads to carry, you might even want to consider the 190 brake horsepower 3 litre V6 CDI diesel range topper. All sprinters come decently equipped with a multifunction steering wheel, a decent quality CD stereo, electric windows, power steering, a Speedtronic variable speed limiter, remote control central locking and an immobiliser. Bluetooth hands-free phone connection with an AUX input is on the options list of course, as are a whole range of top-of-the-line audio systems that boast voice control for the radio, the CD player and the sat-nav. You might also want to consider a very neat universal interface onto which you can bolt your own uh, MP3 player or sat-nav system. Safety-wise, you get ESP stability control with ASR acceleration skid control on all models, plus of course ABS with brake assist and electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective, a bulb failure indicator and a clever feature that flashes the rear brake lights in emergency stops to warn following motorists. If you tick the box for the uh, factory fitted trailer coupling, then you also get an advanced TSA trailer stability system that stops trailers snaking when you're pulling them at speed. There, uh, there's only a driver's airbag included, a standard on panel van variants like this one, but as you'd expect, passenger and thorax airbags are available on an options list that also includes a, a reversing camera and a fire extinguisher. Now, moving to the business end, I like the way that these twin rear doors can be swung around 270 degrees and latched neatly against the sides of the vehicle. Now, the rear door aperture is a wide one. It's 1,565 millimetres in width and either 1,540 or 1,840 millimetres in height, depending on your choice of roof. When it comes to loading height, well, that can be as little as 689 millimetres. And there's this useful, though unfortunately optional, rear step that acts as a good halfway point on which to rest really heavy items before hauling them up to final floor height. Ultimate uh, carriage capacity does of course depend upon your choice of body length and in this case there are four. The short body length gives a loading length of 2,600 millimetres. If you uh, go for the medium body length that's boosted to 3,265 millimetres of loading length and if uh, you opt for either the long or the extra long body lengths, then the uh, extended overhangs that you get with these models mean that you've got an enormous 4,300 or 4,700 millimetres of total loading length. Now the short and medium body lengths sit on wheelbases of either 3,250 millimetres or 3,665 millimetres, uh, while the long and extra long models get an extension between the wheels to 4,325 millimetres. 
If it's ultimate carrying capacity you want though, you'll need to find somewhere to park the high or super high roof sprinter models. Now these are able to boost the uh, standard short length sprinter variants uh, loading height from 1650 millimeters to either 1940 millimeters or a truly enormous 2140 millimeters if you go for the super high roof model. Now, as you would expect, these heightened roofs make a huge difference to carriage capacity. You get 7.5 cubic meters in a short length standard roof sprinter. But if you go for the longest body length and the highest roof, then you're looking at a truly cavernous 17 cubic meters. Plus the way that this load area is designed with near vertical sides and squared off wheel arches means that you can make the most of the space that's on offer. Permissible gross vehicle weights run between three and five tons with corresponding payload capacities of, uh, well, from 730 kilograms uh, for the smallest sprinter to 2,510 kilograms for the largest. Well, this vehicle should be able to take anything that most businesses can throw at it. One dimension is the same for all sprinter models though. That's the uh, 1,780 millimeter width from side to side, which narrows to 1,350 millimeters between these two wheel arches. Easily enough, of course, to slide in a Euro pallet. Now, that's something you can also do through this sliding side door. This can optionally slide open automatically via the central locking and has a door aperture width of 1300 millimeters and a door aperture height of either 1520 or 1820 millimeters in the mainstream models depending on the roof height you've selected. Now once everything's in you'll be pleased to find that there are three interior lights provided for nighttime work and eight lashing eyes provided on the floor to stop everything from moving forward. Now should you forget to use them and everything does slide forward towards the cab then you'll be glad of this full height bulkhead. Now all Sprinter models have this uh, anti-absorbent ply lined high density floor and I'd also recommend that you consider uh, this ply lining kit that's been applied to the sides. It's optional at dealer level. Uh, I'd also tick the box for this very useful shelf that's uh, above the cab area, but accessible only from this loading bay. It's somewhere useful to store uh, lashing straps and the like. Keeping costs down will of course be a major priority for potential sprinter owners, people who are likely to appreciate the clever assist service computer that's standard on all models and is able to calculate when a garage visit is required, taking into account the vehicle's actual usage. Now, oil change intervals are reckoned to be on average about every 25,000 miles, with service intervals on average about every 50,000 miles. But careful users can extend this by up to 6,000 miles in each case. A three-year uh, unlimited mileage warranty is standard, as is a 12-year anti-perforation bodywork warranty. Now, residual values are predictably class-leading. After three years and or 90,000 miles, total costs for your Sprinter motoring are likely to be around 1,400 pounds less than they would be if you opted for an equivalent Ford Transit, even taking into account this Mercedes higher upfront asking price. Now in practical terms, what that means is for a, say a, a long bodied, high roofed 313 CDI Sprinter model like the one I've got here, well it's pence per mile running costs is about 40.5 pence per mile compared to 42 pence per mile for the equivalent competitive Ford Transit. And of course, it doesn't harm residuals that this LCV has a legendary reputation for reliability in the market, underlined by over 7 million miles of testing. This is an engine that's uh, been developed to run for a minimum of 220,000 miles. 
And as for day-to-day -day operating costs, well, these have been decreased significantly by the cleaner Euro 5 diesel engine range introduced back in 2009 that keeps CO2 emissions to between 222 and just over 260 grams per kilometre, depending on the variant chosen. Combined fuel consumption, well, that should vary anything between 28 and 31 miles to the gallon on a regular basis, depending on model. If you're familiar with the operating costs of a pre-Euro 5 Sprinter model, then Mercedes reckons that this one should be able to save you between 55 and 165 gallons of fuel a year in comparison with its predecessor on a 30,000 mile annual mileage, depending on the variant chosen. Up that annual mileage to 90,000 miles a year and the savings stack up even more, somewhere between 165 and 500 gallons of fuel saving a year, depending on the version you go for. Now to get towards the upper segment of those potential savings, then you'll need to specify your sprinter with an extra cost eco start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, when you're waiting at the lights or stuck in urban traffic. Now it costs an extra 500 pounds or so, but operators have found that this system can cut their fuel bills by up to 24% or more, and that they more than get this feature's extra cost back in higher residuals when the time comes to sell. To really maximise on running cost savings, you'll need to pay a bit more again and go for Mercedes Blue Efficiency Package. Now, as well as EcoStart, this includes battery management, uh, low rolling resistance tyres, an Eco Power Steering Pump, a gear shift indicator, a controlled fuel pump and various mechanical modifications. Further running cost savings could be maximised if you also take advantage of the fact that this Sprinter will run on up to 10% biodiesel. The other alternative to getting running costs down at the same time as decreasing smoky emissions as part of Sprinter motoring is to go for the NGT natural gas powered version. Now, this model is able to cover a range of up to 740 miles using a combination of gas and petrol drive and puts out far lower levels of CO2, one reason why this variant is exempt from the London congestion charge. Despite its European success, this Sprinter still isn't one of the first vans that many British businesses think of when they're looking for a really large LCV. But on the evidence of this test, perhaps it should be. It's as big and as practical as any of its rivals and has a more refined drivetrain. Plus, crucially, if you specify your vehicle correctly, you'll be buying in to a set of running cost figures that can't be bettered in this segment. Yes, of course, there are cheaper rivals. Some of them feel a bit more avant-garde too and have cleverer cabs. But when you boil it down to the things that actually matter when it comes to running a vehicle of this kind, the Sprinter ticks most of the important boxes with the kind of thoroughness you'd expect from something bearing the famous three-pointed star. All of which means that whatever your business, this could be your right-hand van.